Hi, this is Eric. I'm going to attempt to give you a little bit of a live video uh, today, and this is going to be, I'm going to talk about Mackie Machine Control in Ableton. Um, so anyway, here I have a Native Instruments uh, machine interface, and some of you may be familiar with the machine. Uh, it's VST plugin, uh, it's instrument on its own, but um, I'm not going to talk about that much today, and instead I'm going to talk about how uh, I've set up machine to talk to Ableton. And some of this stuff comes built in. Uh, there's Mackie machine control built into Ableton already. Um, but they also have some uh, uh, templates that come with the machine. I found them to be sort of less than adequate. So I, I kind of made a, a bunch or of modifications to my own. You'll see here, uh, the cool thing is you can set up all these pages. So I can't remember the mute page. And if I press the mutes over here, you'll see, you know, the tracks come on and off. I go over here and I go to the uh, solo page. I can solo tracks. Rec you know the arm of the record. Got that covered. Uh, I also have some more elaborate tracks. This one covers track I/O, sends, pans, plugins, etc. So let's see if I say track I/O, you can see everything's assigned there. I can then even change. Uh, yeah. See the inputs changing and the changing up here. That'd be kind of usually kind of an unusual thing to do, but it's possible. Uh, more interesting are like the sends. So you can see the sends A and B. See those changing over there. Right now I have that track selected, so you can like select different tracks and select them by. I have it set up so that these are track select. Oh, there's no track there. I also have some uh, navigation this way, left and right. So I can just keep going, you know, track, track, track. Um, and the, the most important thing that I found the Mackie control added that wasn't there in the regular stuff was really the ability to do um, control plugins. So if I go to my page here, Right, I press control and I can choose a plugin, and you'll see. Oh, does this have anything associated with it? Well, that might be a little bit too, <laughs> a little bit too ambitious to go to that one here. Let me try a different one here. Uh, okay, the plugin page. Put that one on. It's a little tricky. Uh, choose. No, not track IO. Whoops. Mm, Head all. There's my virtual. Pot. Okay, there. So that's my virtual pot page. Press Control, and then I'll press that to choose. I'm supposed to be choosing. Try a different one. Tick processing on there. Okay, so there. Now you can see it. So. I'll change the gate threshold, and you'll see it change over there. Okay. If I hit VPOT again, it's just going to choose the default values for things. Whoops. Oh, that might have been one. I had a stuck button there. Remember not to do that. All these rubber buttons on a lot of these different interfaces can do that. You have to be a little careful. Okay, so we'll go back again. You see I can choose. I can turn the browser on and off, detail on and off. Clip. I'll switch between the clip and plugins, between session and range mode. Uh, I can go back to arrangement from um, once I'm in, if I've, I've modified my recording, I'm going to go back to the arrangement. Uh, I have locator, zoom, all that kind of great stuff. So, with a little bit of ingenuity and the Mackie control template. You can actually, and I'm going to, I'll, I'll give you hopefully a link at the bottom to a page that uh, has some information about some of the Mackie machine mappings. I also have a master tempo, uh, ma excuse me, not master tempo, master volume. I can choose my drum tracks here, so just like regular things, I can and do that. And then of course, uh, start, uh, pause, and all that kind of stuff are mapped in here. So let's see if I hit play, there's some stuff starting to happen. 
I'll go to the page that controls volume. And stop that from being muted. <laughs> my drum's coming in. I also have my regular launch pad over here. Oops, wrong page. So I can trigger pages as well. So it's kind of the two of these together are pretty cool. This for doing all the kind of grid based stuff that you typically want to do. And then all the controls and, and as a you know drum pads and things over here, this really works out well. Put my screen back on. Um, so the way I use things, it's kind of how, you know like my, my main uh, plug-in interfaces and so on I can do up here and start and stop. I have my clip triggering and so on over here. Um, Control my audio interface. You'll notice as I was like, kind of jumping back and forth between tracks, you might have heard my uh, my channel strip kind of control stuff going on over here. So I can uh, control volume and um, also you know some EQs and stuff and kind of set that up as a traditional mixer a little bit. And then I've got my two keyboards over here uh, for MIDI interfaces. And, and I went with Novation because I also have LCDs on these, and they they can also be mapped. So I can I can have certain devices controlled over here and certain devices controlled over here kind of gives me kind of the, the ultimate thing. If I want to sit over here, I have device control. Work over here, I can get to device control. And then if I have like a certain synth associated with this one, its controls are up there. This one controls are down there. Uh, I can't say enough nice things about the Novation product line, especially if you shop around, you can get some really good deals on stuff. Um, I got the limited edition, but normally this thing goes for like, I think it was originally like a $750 keyboard. I got it for like $250 uh, on clearance before they got rid of all the uh, special editions. And I went for the old style uh, 49 SL compact with this one. So, I mean, if you buy the latest and greatest, you want the latest and greatest, you're gonna pay the latest and greatest bucks. If you buy you know, a, a model behind, you're gonna save a heck of a lot of money. Um, the uh, note, excuse me, the launch pad isn't a super expensive piece to begin with. Uh, that's like you can get them for about you know 150 bucks or so. Uh, Got to admit, the machine was a bit of a uh, an indulgence. You know, it's it's still uh, 500 bucks or so. Um, but considering all the plugins you get with it, all the sounds, all that kind of great stuff, as well as getting a you know really really great interface with LCDs on it, it's pretty cool. Um, my audio, audio interface, I kind of also indulged a little bit there. Um, the nice thing about it, in addition to being a great audio interface, it has great preamps, uh, mic preamps on it. It also records, so it's a stand standalone recorder. It's got this cool, you know, at least one motorized fader. I like the idea of having, you know, at least one motorized fader. Um, so let's see if I'm, you can see my, I'm on the right track over there. Oh, there we go. So I wanted to have at least one nice motorized fader in the, in the uh, setup here. So that's a little bit of a tour. Um, I don't have a heck of a lot of cool stuff uh, being played right now, but I can do a little. Okay, thanks for tuning in, and uh, take care. Uh, yeah.